The challenge remains. On one side, there are formidable forces, money, political power, the major media. On our side, there are the people of the world and a power greater than money or weapons, the truth. Truth has a power of its own. Art has a power of its own. That age-old lesson that everything we do matters is the meaning of the people's struggle here and everywhere. A poem can inspire a movement. A pamphlet can spark a revolution. Civil disobedience can arouse people and provoke us to think. When we organize with one another, when we get involved, when we stand up and speak out together, we can create a power no government can suppress. We live in a beautiful country, but people who have no respect for human life, freedom or justice have taken it over. It's now up to all of us to take it back. And that was said by Howard Zinn and was taken from a book entitled A Power Governments Cannot Suppress. Welcome to Surviving the Matrix, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maxwell Egan. It's a pleasure to be with you once again, and I will be your host for the next hour. Have you ever wondered why your life is such a struggle? Have you ever wondered why you have so many bills these days? Why it's so much harder to pay your rates and to keep your head above the waters of ever-increasing debt that our societies seem to be enslaved to? Have you ever wondered why... You pay more for services now, and yet you receive services that are far lower in standard than what you used to receive. Have you ever really stepped back and looked at the system? Because when you do, folks, it becomes very apparent that the people of this country and of all countries are being scammed. They're being dispossessed, and it's happening in the most insidious of ways. And I'd like to attempt to explain this to you a little bit today, a little bit about how this works. Now, as hard as it may be for many people in Western society to admit, and as much as many people may wish to hide from the fact the truth is that our governments are stealing from us, ladies and gentlemen. They are quite purposefully and quite illegally stealing not only the wealth, but also the blood, the sweat and the very lives of each individual. And they are stripping each country bare of their resources. They're doing it district by district, suburb by suburb, household by household. They are in the process right now of dispossessing all the people of the earth and locking the entire Western world down into a very meticulously planned, methodically constructed and covertly executed control grid. They are also doing similar things in countries that may not be classed as the Western world, but they're just not as quite as advanced as what they are in the West and the way they're doing this, folks, the way they are performing this theft over the people of your nation, of my nation, is via the art of deception and some very clever sleight of hand. You see, what we believe to be government is actually not. And what we find there instead is a corporation that is masquerading as government. Now, I can only really speak for Australia, but I can guarantee that this is the way it also is in the United States. It's the way it is in Britain. It's the way it is in all countries that have been westernized. You'll find that all of these governments are, in fact, corporations. And what these corporations are engaged in is extortion and theft of wealth and resources via a very clever system of human trafficking, people farming. And this can be easily confirmed by anybody who takes the time to look. But the thing is, folks, that this situation can be rectified if the people that are being farmed simply pay attention. And what I intend to do for you today is offer you an explanation on what the government hierarchy is and offer suggestions to you as to how to deal 
with this hierarchy, how to deal with this situation and how to escape the clutches of this corporate system. And we have to start doing this, folks, because what's happening in the world today with the, the destruction of the water table and the austerity measures and the way people are being squeezed out of accommodation and squeezed off their land, we cannot let this continue. We have to take the matter in hand. And there's no good attempting to operate within the parameters provided for us by those people whom are currently masquerading as government because their parameters are corrupt. Their parameters are designed to not help you, but to help government, to protect government at the expense of the population. That's the way the system is designed. And they feed it to you and they tell you that it is law, but actually it is not. It's simply corporate regulations. That's all it is. And none of it applies to you. And there is a way through this, and there is a way through the haze, but we have to take the matter in hand, folks. The gloves have to come off. This has to be the year that the human race stands up and says enough is enough. And I'm going to start doing it everywhere I go, and I encourage other people to do the same. And they're doing it. People are doing it around the country. In fact, next week I plan to have on a lady from Victoria who is taking on the council in a certain municipality down there and I'll wait until she comes on to tell you about it but the stand she is making is a fantastic stand and it's also providing a template that can be used not only in this country but in every country. You see you can get these people to expose themselves folks if you simply ask the right questions and this is the year we have to do it because if we don't, if we don't stand up and take responsibility for ourselves, start holding our public trustees accountable for their actions and start showing a little backbone and reining these governments in and putting humanity and mankind back on the top of the food chain, then we're going to lose this planet, folks. We're going to lose this planet, and not only that, but we're going to get locked down into a control grid, and this is coming. And the people have to wake up, and the police have to wake up because we are going to need the police in this fight because... We are going to need the police to go and arrest those imposters currently masquerading as the Australian government. Every single one of them, folks, from the lowest council member right up to the Prime Minister. And I believe the matter has to be dealt with this year, and it can only be dealt with by the people. And really all that's needed for the people to deal with it is a simple understanding of what this system is and how this system works a simple understanding of how they are being fooled and how they are being stolen from. Because it is happening to every single person in this country, including the police. And so there's no reason why the police should stand against any of this because it concerns them just as much as it concerns everybody else. And if we are going to have a country, we need to pay attention. Now what we've got here in Australia, folks, is we've got a corporate system, a corporation that is masquerading as the Australian government, but really it's not. And what we're seeing is a tightening and a consolidation of this corporation. We're seeing systems that are being put in place in regarding local councils that are basically transferring power to local councils, making state government and national government even irrelevant. And this is a very dangerous situation as well because this is a methodology that is being used to strip the wealth of the nation suburb by suburb. Now, the law of Australia is defined by the Australian Constitution. I mean, that's if we really want to get into law, folks. Personally, I even think the Constitution is fiction. I think all of it is fiction. I think that everything below man is a creation of man, and thus it is all fiction. But there are people who wish to work within the parameters of law and who seem to be unable to know who they are or be able to free themselves unless they look at things from a legal and lawful perspective. So that's what I'm attempting to demonstrate here. And look, I mean no disrespect with that, and I hope it didn't come across as sounding condescending. It's just that people tend to think this way. They're unable to free themselves unless they're able to place it on a legal platform. And they do this because they've been trained to do this. So it's quite understandable that many people think this way. And that's what I was trying to say. As I said, I don't mean to be condescending, I don't mean to be rude, but it's it's just not the way I think. I think in a very right brain way, but this is the way people have been trained to think, and so that's the approach that I'm going to use in addressing this topic for you today. 
So getting back to my point, the Australian government is defined by the Constitution of Australia and such government is known as the government of the Commonwealth. That is the legitimate Australian government. But what we have when we get letters in the mail is we get letters from this entity that calls itself the Commonwealth of Australia. So what is the Commonwealth of Australia? Is the Commonwealth of Australia the government of the Commonwealth? If so, then why does it have not only a different name, but also a different logo? Because the government of the Commonwealth is defined by the crest which displays the lion and the unicorn, whereas the Commonwealth of Australia has a crest that displays the kangaroo and the emu. And this is a corporate logo, folks. It's a trademark. That's the thing. Now, this might seem like a small issue to you folks, but think about it. This is a, a very, very important thing. The name of your government is a very important thing. And if the government was to change names from the government of the Commonwealth to the Commonwealth of Australia, the only way that name change could be carried out would be through a referendum. So if you're listening to this and you're an Australian citizen, I would ask you, do you remember there ever being a referendum where we decided to change the name of the government from the government of the Commonwealth to the Commonwealth of Australia? And what happens when you look up the Commonwealth of Australia? What you find is that the Commonwealth of Australia is a private corporation registered with the Securities Exchange Commission in Washington, D.C., and it has an ABN number of 12210416. And it's registered there, folks. It has an SEC entity name, the Commonwealth of Australia. It has an SEC Central Index Key. It has an SEC Standard Industrial Code. And it has a business address of 1601 Massachusetts Avenue, NW, Washington, D.C., 20036. And this company also has subsidiary companies. These subsidiary companies being the State of New South Wales, ABN 0665611153, the State of Victoria, ABN 0545586619, the State of Queensland, ABN 0661029300, the State of South Australia, ABN 0502089211. The State of Western Australia, ABN 0725260008. The State of Tasmania, ABN 0532013308. And the Trustees of the Northern Territory Government, ABN 0905984. That is what we have in Australia, folks. That is what this system is. That is what the entity posing as the government is, and that is what the states that are subsidiary companies beneath this entity are. They're all businesses, folks. They all have ABNs. And the same will be found for your local council in whatever area you are in. If you go to your local council's website, you will find that your local council has an ABN. Now, why would a government body have an ABN, folks. Now, if the council or the states were actually legitimate government bodies, and even if the Commonwealth of Australia was a legitimate government body, then why would it require an ABN? An ABN is an Australian business number, folks. And the fact that all of these entities have ABNs tells you instantly that these entities are not government, they are private business. They require an ABN because they pay tax to government. Why would your council need an ABN, folks, if it was government? Why would the state need an ABN if it was government? Think about it. Governments collect tax. They don't pay tax, so why would they need an ABN? But they do. They have ABNs. And that is because they are required to pay tax, and this is because they are all private companies, which you as the peaceful inhabitants of this country have no affiliation with, nor are you required to pay them any money or follow any of their rules. That is, of course, unless they can show you that you are an employee 
of their company or that you have entered into a contract with their company. That's the way it works, folks, and that's even under their legal system. They're private companies, folks, and everything they hold over you is simply smoke and mirrors. It's fiction. 